When we lift our eyes to the night and glimpse the Milky Way, it's almost impossible to grasp the outrageous gulfs separating its stars, planets, and everything in between. Tonight, we'll set off on a journey to feel the true scale of our world and our own existence compared with the solar system, our galaxy, and even the observable universe. Earth, that small blue dot we call home, measures roughly 25,000 miles, 40,000 kilometers, around the equator. For ages, we imagined ourselves central, immense, maybe even infinite. Reality is far different. We live on a finite, almost spherical world, drifting in a cosmos that dwarfs us beyond imagination. The moon looks close enough to touch, but that's a trick of perspective. On average, it's about 239,000 miles, 384,400 kilometers away. You could line up about 30 Earths in the space between us. For our everyday sense of distance, that's mind-breaking. The Apollo crews took a little over three days to get there, driving non-stop at 125 miles per hour, 200 kilometers per hour. You'd be on the road for more than two and a half months. And remember, three humans did that voyage inside a cramped capsule, surrounded by cables and life support, trying to survive beyond our atmosphere. Twelve people have walked there, and that's still the farthest our species has ever gone. Seeing Earth from the moon must be one of the most surreal views possible. Two massive bodies separated by what, on a universal scale, is almost nothing. Roughly 1.25 light seconds. Push farther and the numbers explode. Mars, that rusty point of light, sits on average about 137 million miles, 220 million kilometers, from us, over 570 times the Earth-Moon distance. In diagrams, that span is nearly impossible to draw to scale. A crude trip in a capsule would take a bit over nine months, and the route isn't a straight line. It's an elliptical transfer, which can effectively double the path. Communications lag from 12 to 20 minutes one way, depending on orbital positions. If something goes wrong, there's no quick rescue. Let's climb higher still. Neptune, the outermost planet. From Earth, it ranges between 2.7 and 2.9 billion miles, 4.3 to 4.7 billion kilometers depending on where both worlds are in their orbits. Very few human artifacts have ventured that far. The Voyager 2 probe is the only spacecraft to have flown past Neptune up close back in 1989. Voyager 1 didn't stop there, but it now holds the record for the most distant human-made object, more than 15 billion miles, 24 billion kilometers from Earth nearly 59,000 times the Earth-Moon distance, or 100-plus times Earth to Mars at average spacing. At these scales, astronomers switch units. One astronomical unit, AU, is the mean distance from Earth to the Sun, about 93 million miles, 150 million kilometers. Voyager 1 is beyond 150 astronomical units, over 14 billion miles, 22.5 billion kilometers. It also photographed the most distant image of Earth ever taken, the famous pale blue dot, snapped from about 3.7 billion miles, 6 billion kilometers away. Carl Sagan's reflection still echoes. Everything we've loved, hated, believed, built, and destroyed, every saint and sinner, lived out their lives on a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Today, Voyager 1 is so far that our blue pinprick would be lost in glare and distance. Practically speaking, we've vanished from sight. And nobody is ready to chase that far in person. Space is vast, 
harsh, and unyielding. Outside our tiny comfort bubble, the so-called habitable zone, the universe isn't designed for fragile creatures like us. And ironically, Voyager 1 still hasn't left the solar system by many definitions. The farthest frontier is the theoretical Oort cloud, a shell of icy bodies that may extend beyond 62,000 miles times 1,600. In fact, 100,000 astronomical units, over 9.3 trillion miles, 15 trillion kilometers. Past this point, light years become the only sensible measure. Estimates place the Oort cloud's far edge somewhere between approximately 158 and 195 light years away. To clear the solar system could mean crossing 39 million Earth Moon distances, or approximately 68,500 Earth Mars distances. Traveling about 38,000 miles per hour, 17 kilometers per second, Voyager 1 might need approximately 300 years just to reach the Oort cloud and approximately 30,000 years to cross it. By human standards, that's an abyss. And yet, in the stellar context, this is still local. Our nearest star, Proxima Centauri, sits 4.22 light years away. The Alpha Centauri system lies at 4.37 light years. Reaching Proxima would be like covering approximately 104 million Earth Moon spans. Using Apollo era speeds, we'd be talking approximately 900,000 years of travel. Even the mighty Saturn V couldn't hurl a 100 ton payload beyond the Sun's grasp. With present day technology, it's just not feasible. The scale of stars demands completely new propulsion ideas. For perspective, the Sun fades from naked eye view at approximately 45 light years. Humanity has been broadcasting radio for a bit, over 120 years. Those waves now form a approximately 240 light year wide bubble. That sounds big until you zoom out. We reside inside a local bubble, a kind of rarefied cavity, roughly approximately 300 light years across. Even within that neighborhood, our sun is effectively invisible. At 10,000 light years, you're in the region of the Gould Belt, a ring-like distribution of young stars approximately 3,000 light years in diameter. Our local bubble becomes just another smear. By 20,000 light years, it's clear we sit in the Orion Arm, one of the Milky Way's spiral branches. We once thought the Milky Way spanned about 100,000 light years. Evidence now hints it could reach approximately 200,000 light years across. On that map, our radio bubble, our entire hello to the cosmos, vanishes. We're smaller than a pixel, less than a grain of stardust, functionally nothing. It's hard to imagine any alien civilization noticing us right now. On a galactic canvas, we are tiny and faint. Our galaxy, though magnificent, is only one of hundreds of billions. It likely hosts approximately 200 to 400 billion stars, yet the ones visible from Earth within approximately 120 light years amount to a ridiculous zero point. Zero, 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 one percent of the total. It's like staring at a single grain of sand and believing you've seen the whole beach. Keep pulling back. The Milky Way is a member of the local group, a gravitational family of 50 plus galaxies. That group belongs to the Virgo supercluster, a titanic concentration of clusters spanning roughly approximately 350 million light years, 107 million parsecs. Against that backdrop, the Milky Way shrinks to a dot in a vast web. Beyond Virgo lies Laniakea, 
Hawaiian for immeasurable heaven, a continent-sized flow of galaxies stretching approximately 500 million light-years across and containing 100,000-plus superclusters. And even Lania Kea sits inside something larger. The Pisces Cetus Supercluster Complex, a network of filaments and clusters extending over a billion light-years. Surveys keep revealing new knots of structure. We already catalog millions of galaxies, and the count keeps climbing. So where does it end? As far as we can tell, we live inside the observable universe, everything whose light has had time to reach us. We can only see out to roughly 13.7 billion light years in look back time, but because space has expanded faster than light can catch up, those same galaxies are now much farther than when their light started traveling. The result is a present day observable sphere approximately 93 billion light years across, about 46.5 billion light years in every direction. And what about beyond that horizon? Inflation theory suggests the actual universe may be at least hundreds of times larger than what we can observe, say, approximately 500 times as a conservative thought experiment, implying a diameter on the order of approximately 46 trillion light years or more. At that scale, the question becomes unavoidable. What are we, exactly, in a cosmos so enormous? We're one galaxy among trillions, one sun among sextillions, and one Earth that can't even be plotted at these scales. It's hard to believe a universe like this exists only for us. Even if we lived forever, we'd never survey all of it. There will always be breathtaking worlds, unknown regions, and life forms we'll never encounter. So who are we in all this? If one light year equaled one yard, the observable universe would be about the size of Mercury's orbit. The Earth would be a sugar molecule. And we, human beings, would be subatomic specks. Almost nothing. And yet, somehow, here we are. In cosmic terms, our civilization spans approximately 0.001% of the universe's age. If the cosmos were a living being with a long lifespan, we'd be transient particles that flicker in and out in milliseconds. But not ordinary particles. In that fleeting moment, we learn to look outward, to decode a sliver of its grandeur, and to interact with it. When we are gone, the heavy elements forged in us will help build new stars, new planets, and new galaxies. That's our legacy, a passing but essential pattern in the universe's ongoing evolution. Through us, the cosmos becomes more complex, more beautiful, more alive. Fragile and brief as we are, we carry within us an astonishing brain, capable of wondering, creating, and discovering tucked away in a small corner of space. That, paradoxically, is what makes us special. If this journey reshaped your sense of scale, don't let it end here. Subscribe to Cosmic Mysteries, turn on notifications, and tell us in the comments. Which distance or comparison stunned you the most, and why? Share this video with a friend who loves space, Remember, knowledge compounds, and the dividends are infinite.